Hello everyone, I'm Eric, Marketing Manager from TI Battery Charging Solutions. The topic I'm going to talk about today is how to understand the battery charger IC specifications. This is the purpose and the outline of the presentation. I'm going to share the understanding of the key charging parameters and how they are related to the system and charging performance. For a charging system, there are inputs, system, and battery. Safety is always the most important concern. Therefore, I will talk about the parameters related to the adapter, battery charging, system, and safety. With the knowledge to the system and charging parameters, we can conduct a comparison of the total solution and bomb cost for different schemes. I wish you will appreciate the value that the TI solution provides. There are many applications requiring batteries, such as the boom portable devices, smartphone, tablet, power bank, MiFi, and portable speakers. Battery power is also used in handheld industrial applications such as thermal camera, point of sales machine. Medical and security surveillance cannot afford power blackout and battery power is used for po backup power. The question is, when we get ap application information, how to select a matching charger. When you go to www.ti.com chargers, there is a selection tool to use. The input for these tools are all these parameters, which is not easy to see, but I list the, the parameter here. There are battery chemistries, how many cells are in series, what are the charger voltage and current required? How much is the input voltage? What's the control interface? Is that a standalone charger? Or you want I2C or SM bus control interface? Is there any special feature required, such as the power pass, Jetta temperature profile, or the OTG? What's the required package? When these parameters are given, when all several charges could be found for your application. Then the next question is, what system performance we are expecting from these charges? This page illustrated the charging system described on the previous slide. What are the architecture? Whether it is a traditional one or the NVDC architecture. For the battery, we want to know what's the chemistry, battery configuration, how many in parallel or in series, what's the battery capacity. Then we know what's the charging voltage and current. For the system, we also want to know what are the voltage and current. The input is a adapter, whether it is a uh, USB or a regular wall adapter. For the control interface, we want to know whether it's you require a standalone charger or uh, some kind of communication interface such as I2C or SM bus. For the safety, the, we are going to talk about the, for the battery charger itself and, the related, and the how they related to the uh, battery. For packaging, do we need an integrated solution or just a controller? The data sheet provides detailed characterization data related to the performance.
A data sheet has three major parts. The first page is the overview of the key features, application, and packaging information. The second part is the electronic characteristic data and the detailed feature description. The third part is the application, layout, and packaging information. We will focus on the second part, which is the EC table and the detailed feature descriptions. The first page of the data sheet offers the overview for all key features, suitable applications, and brief descrip descriptions. Here's the device name, what's the charging performance, like uh, the charging current efficiency, what's the input voltage, how many battery in series this charger can handle, is that an integrated solution or just uh, a discrete version controller, what's the safety feature, the accuracy, and uh, the packaging information. And what's the application target? There is a short description about these key features. Before we dive into the numbers, I would like to have your attention to the test conditions that apply to all charging parameters here. For TI charger, the test conditions are with different input voltage and battery voltage. Well, some competition only specify the data at one single input voltage point. TI chargers are also characterized through the temperature range of minus 40 degrees to 125 degrees. Well, we can see the competition only tests the data at a single temperature point, which is the room temperature. It is easy to be tricked if we find a similar accuracy but we don't pay attention to the test condition. What we can expect for the TI charger? Some competition shows a similar accuracy, but the test condition is at only single operation point. TI cross all the different combination of the test operation condition. The competition has less accuracy under the similar test condition. Now let's dive into the details. There are recommended operation condition and the absolute max rating for a charger. For BQ24190 family, we can see the operating condition is from 3.9 volt to 17 volt. Well, the absolute max rating is 20 volt. It looks like reasonable for the absolute max rating is 20 volt for a 17 volt operating voltage. However, for the BQ24290 family, the recommended operating input voltage is 3.9 to 6.2 volt, while the absolute max rating is 15 volt which is much higher than the maximum 6.2 operating voltage. This is due to the fact that the design consideration, we want to prevent the charger from being damaged, just in case a 12 volt adapter is incorrectly plugged in. When this 12 volt adapter is plugged in, the charger is just simply in a protection mode. It will not work, but it will, it will not damage the charger either. When the adapter is plugged in, there are several operations for charger described in the EC table and also illustrated by the block diagram. When the V-bus voltage reaches 3.8 volt, the device is out of UVLO. The host can establish the I2C communication with the charger. When the V bus and the V bed voltage difference exceeds 250 millivolt, 
the charger exits the sleep mode. The reason to have a sleep mode is to minimize the charger power consumption when the adapter is not plugged in. Here is a comparison of the current consumption in sleep mode, which is much lower than the normal operation mode, which is not in the uh, sleep mode. When the V bus is higher than 18 volt, the over voltage protection will be activated. The converter will be in high Z mode, and this 700 millivolt is the hysteresis to get out the OVP mode. When the adapter is above UVO, not in sleep mode and not in over voltage mode, the Q1 will be turned on, which is off before to prevent the V bus short resulting in a high short current from the battery. The REGN voltage will be generated. We will have more discussion about the REGN voltage later. The input current DPM prevents the adapter with no current capability from hitting the brownout condition. There are two types of current sensing for the input current in order to implement the input current DPM. External current sensing and the integrated in input current sensing. This picture shows external current sensing the voltage on the AC set pin determines the input current threshold for the DPM. The current sensing signal from ACN and ACP is amplified 20 times and compared to the AC set voltage. For given 10 milliohm resistor, we can calculate that 1 ampere input current is equal to 10 milliohm times 1 ampere times 20 equals to 200 millivolt. Therefore, we can understand this 5 ampere per volt current set factor is from 1 ampere per 200 millivolt. The accuracy of the input current DPM determines how the maximum adapter capacity can be utilized. TI can achieve up to plus minus 3% accuracy versus the competition plus minus 5% on the market. We know that the accuracy is lower when the charging current is small. One factor of this major result for the accuracy deviation is the offset of the amplifier. Compared to the discrete current sensing, the integrated current sensing can reduce the bomb cost and solution size. This is the example of the integrated current sensing. BQ24, 190, and 290 family are host controlled 1S charger. It has integrated current sensing. The input current limit can be set by either register or a hardware pin RI limb. The external current limit pin serves as a hardware solution to limit the current input. The accuracy is plus minus 0.1 ampere percent at 1.5 ampere setting. The real input current limit is the lower of this pin setting and the register setting inside. Customer can manipulate the limb to control the input current. For the USB 2.0 port, 
there are 100 milliampere and 500 milliampere current limit that a charger can draw the current from the adapter. For the USB port 3.0, the input current limit is 150 and 900 milliampere respectively. We need to pay attention that this current is specified as the maximum current. Here is the measurement we have for the four settings. As we can see, the current draw is less than the maximum current setting and is within the specification. The input voltage dynamic power management can be used to prevent the adapter with unknown current capability from heating the brownout condition. When a charge draws higher current than an adapter can provide, then the adapter voltage will drop. When the dropped voltage reaches the preset within DPM threshold voltage, then the charger will not draw higher current from the adapter. The input voltage DPM provides the flexibility to use the third-party adapter with unknown current capability. Compared to the input current DPM, the input voltage DPM has more steps with a higher resolution. For the system voltage, there is a minimum system voltage setting. This is used to allow the system instantaneously be powered on with a deeply discharged battery or with no battery. As we can see from this figure, the system voltage is regulated higher than the minimum system voltage. When we set the minimum system voltage at 3.5, Typically, the regulation point is 150 millivolt higher than this setting. The main purpose is to tolerate the load transient and the regulation variation. We discussed before that the REGN voltage will be ready if the input voltage source is qualified. REGN voltage is the driver voltage of the buck regulator top and the bottom MOSFET. It is also the internal voltage reference for some circuits, such as the bias voltage for semester network. The current capability of this RGN LDO is specified for the reason that some customer wants to use this REGN voltage for 